Good day, grade 12s. Welcome to this next lesson in mathematics. I hope that you've had a great week so far and that you're ready to continue revising paper one. So as I told you yesterday, just in case you don't remember, we are currently going through the February, March 2015 supplementary exam paper. And basically what I'm trying to do is trying to give you as much exposure as possible to as many exam papers as possible. So that's what we will be doing and when we finish this we'll be going through paper two and then we're just going to keep going um, because we've effectively covered the whole curriculum. So I want to make sure that, and then yeah, we, yeah we'll, we'll run some assessments with you guys and if we find that there is actually um, some sections that you really really are struggling on then we will continue. Okay so what we were doing yesterday was this okay it said a quadratic sequence is defined by the following properties it said t2 minus t1 was 7 t3 minus t2 was 13 T4 minus T3 was 19, okay? And then the next thing they asked was, what is the value of T5 minus T4? But if you looked at this, this is actually the second difference over here. This is the second difference. You can see it's six, six. So therefore this would be six as well. So 19 plus six is 25. So therefore T5 minus T4 is gonna be 25. Okay, now they then want us to write down the value of T70 minus T69. So we're actually looking at, and I need you to understand that this is what we're doing. We're actually looking at this part here. We're pretending that this is our sequence. Because if we look at this seven, we see it's T2 minus T1. 13 is T3 minus T2, 19 is T4 minus T5, and 20 is T5 minus T4. Then we actually have not a quadratic sequence, we actually have a linear sequence, a normal AP with terms 1, 2, 3, and 4. And you can see that T4, the fourth term was T5 minus T4, the third term was T4 minus T3, the second term was T2 minus T1, and the first term was T2 minus T1, which means that we are looking here for the 69th term of this arithmetic sequence. And that's as far as we got. We got as far as T69 is equal to A plus N minus one D. So now what we need to do is work out our different bits that here. So our A is obviously seven in this case. Our D is the common difference, which in this case is six. We've already worked it out. And our N in this case is 69. So we're gonna go T69 is equal to seven plus 68 times by six. Why is it 68? Because it's n minus one, so it's 69 minus one. And all I'm gonna do is pop that in my calculator. So I'm gonna get my calculator out and I'm gonna clear it. And I'm going to go 68 multiplied by six plus seven equals 415. So that's 415. Okay, so there you go. You now know that this term here, T69, is actually well, the value of T70 minus T69, which in this case is T69 of this bit here, is going to be 415. So in other words, the gap from T7 in other words, if we had to carry this on, this gap T70 to T69 is going to be 415. Okay, now they say calculate the value of T69. They actually want the 69th term now of the actual sequence. They want the 69th term of the actual sequence. And they say if T89 is 23,594. Okay, so they want, they're telling us that the actual one is T89 is 23,594 um, and they want to know what T69 is. Okay, so that's quite a big gap to have to add up physically by ourselves. They obviously want us to use formula. So just to let you know, just to remind you that for a quadratic formula, Tn is equal to um, a n squared plus b n plus c, obviously, 
And the way this works is that this is equal to 2a, this is equal to um, 4a plus b, and this last one, t1, would be a plus b plus c, which we don't have. Okay, so um, let's just think about this. It says calculate the value of t69 if t89 is 23,594. Okay, so we know, therefore, that... Just a, just a second. If T89 is 23,594, do you agree that we can say, well, T90 is going to be six more than that? Okay. Um, well, actually, the gap from T90 to 289 is going to be six more than that. So we can say, hang on a minute, we can say, watch this, we can say T90 minus T89 is going to be six. No, it's not. No, it's not going to be at all. Um, oh, I'm being silly. Um, okay, I'm being silly. I'll tell you why I'm being silly. Um, okay, let me explain. This year, T69 is the 69th term of this thing. Okay, of this AP. But it's not the 69th, it's the 69th term of the AP. This is the 89th term of the arithmetic sequence. And they want the arithmetic, the value of the T69 of the arithmetic sequence. So we know that T89 is equal to A times 89 squared plus B times 89 plus c okay but we also know what do we know let me just erase all the other writing because i actually need to write all over this again so let's erase all that okay so let me start again do you agree that this bit here is 2a this here is 3a plus b and this one if we had it would be a plus b plus c do you agree so we can say okay fine from this we know that 2a is six, therefore a is three. Awesome. We therefore we can substitute that into this, and we get um, we get that this is three a plus b. So we can say well three times by three plus b has to equal to seven. Three times three is nine plus b equals seven. So do you agree that b is going to be minus two? Okay. So now we know that t n is equal to 3n squared minus 2n plus c. But we don't know what c is. But we've just been given t89. We know that t89 is equal to 3 times 89 squared minus 2 times 89 plus c. And that is equal to 23,594. So do you agree it's going to be pretty easy now to solve for C? We can say therefore C is 23,594 minus 3 times 89 squared plus 2 times 89. So let's work out what that is. So let's get our calculator out. So we're going to go 2, 3, 5, 9, 4 minus, I'm going to put it in brackets, just to make it easier for myself, 3 times 89 squared, squared, bracket, plus, bracket, 2 times 89, close bracket, equals 9. C equals 9. Awesome. So now our formula is Tn is equal to 3n squared, minus 2n plus 9. So that there is a formula for our quadratic, um, our quadratic expression, our quadratic sequence. Now, it's so easy to find T69. All we have to do is substitute 69 into wherever the n's are, okay? So let's just erase all this so that I've got space to write. So do you see how easy it was when you just realized that we had already got part of the equation, so we just needed to get the rest of it. 
Okay, so now we know, and I'm just going to change color, that T of 69 is 3 times 69 squared minus 2 times 69 plus 9. So we're going to pop that into our calculator. So we're going to go 3 multiplied by 69 squared minus 2 times 69 plus 9 equals Oh, why did I get a syntax error? Let's try again. 3 times 69 squared minus bracket 2 times 69 close bracket plus 9 equals. There we go. 14,154 equals 14,154. There you go. So that's that question, and I must admit that was quite a sneaky question. We had to think a little bit. So it is kind of what I would expect from a level four question, definitely. Um, so let's move on now to our next question. So you can see we're still on sequences and series. Um, since we've already had an AP, chances are this is not going to be, we've had a G, um, I mean a quadratic sequence, so chances are that this is not going to be a, gem, a gem, um, oh, sorry, my words for today fail me. This is not going to be a quadratic sequence. In fact, I tell you, it's an infinite geometric series. And when I see infinite geometric series, I know that my R is going to be smaller than one. Because the only way that you can have an infinite geometric series um, is if, and we have a sum to infinity, is if we are going to be getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So if you look here, you can see R1, I mean, the first term is 45, the second term is 40.5, the third term is 36.45. So it definitely is getting smaller and smaller. It says calculate the value of the 12th term. Okay, now on your formula sheet, you will have the formula for these things, but you should know that Tn equals AR to the N minus 1. And it says correct to two decimal places, so we're expecting something interesting. Okay, so first of all, we need to work out what these are. So the A is obviously 45, because that's the first term. The R in the geometric sequence is given by T2 divided by T1, or T3 divided by T2, or whatever, because it's going to be a constant. So let's work out our R. Our R, we're going to do T2 divided by T1, so it's going to be 40, 5, all over 45. Okay, so let's find that out. So it's going to be 40.5 divided by 45 equals 0.9. There we go. So our R is 0.9. Okay, so then we can easily work this out. We can go, well, we want the 12th term. So we want T12 is going to be 45 multiplied by 0, 0,9, but it's the power of 11 because it's 12 minus 1. So again, we need our calculator. Okay, so we're going to go 0, 0.9 to the power of 11 equals multiplied by 45 equals and remember they said two, what did they say? Correct to two decimal places. So now we have to look at this and we have to round off and that's pretty easy because that's a one, so this remains the same. So it's 14.12. So the answer to this is 14 comma one, two. Now it says explain why the series converges and it's very easy, it's because R is smaller than one, which means that it's going to get closer and closer and closer to a specific number. Right, now it says calculate the sum to infinity of the series. Okay, so sum to infinity is equal to A over one minus R. Okay, A over one minus R. So that's really easy. The A is 45 over 1 minus 0, 0,9, which is 45 divided by 0, 0,1, which is going to be 450. So in other words, if we keep adding these numbers, 
and even though the numbers get smaller and smaller and smaller, we're going to get closer and closer and closer to 450, but obviously never quite get there. Eventually, I mean, the sum to infinity, so if eventually we could get to the sum to infinity, it would equal 450. Now it says, what is the smallest value of n for which the sum to infinity minus the sum of n is smaller than 1? Okay, so the sum to infinity is 450 minus the sum n is smaller than 1. So what we need to do now is to check whether or not we know what the formulas are for the sum of this. And it's going to be what? It's going to be a times 1 minus r to the n, the sum to n. Is going to be a times 1 minus r to the n all over 1 minus r. Remember that? That is the sum to n. So we're going to substitute that in here because we want to know what the n is. So it's going to be 450 minus a, which is 45, 1 minus 0,9 to the power of n over 1 minus 0,9. It's got to be smaller than 1. Okay, do you understand that? So therefore we can say, well, we can make the work this out. Do you agree? So let's work that out. Um, so I'm only going to work out this bit at the moment. So we've got 45 over 0, 0,1 times by 0, 0,1 to the power of n. That's what this is, which is the same as 450 just change that. Okay, let's change it all. So it becomes 450 minus 450 times by 0,1 to the power of n is smaller than 1. So do you agree I can take that across? So I get minus 450, 0 0.1 to the power of n is going to be smaller than if I take it across, it becomes minus, so it's minus 449. I then divide both sides by 450. So that cancels with that, and that cancels with that, and this cancels with this. And now I've run out of space. So I'm going to erase this bit, okay? So let's erase this bit. So I'm going to erase this bit. And see, it's a nice equation. This is quite a nice equation. Like I said, guys, the supplementary papers are always a little bit harder than the final papers. Well, not always, but there's a 99% probability that it's going to be harder. So what I would suggest you do is try not to need the supplementary papers. But if you want to practice exams, then use the supplementary papers. Okay, so now we want the N. Okay, we need the N for this to happen. Okay, so in order to do this, we actually have to log both sides. So we're going to log um, 0 0.1 to the power of N must be smaller than log uh, 449 over 450. I will eventually divide that. I just don't want to do it now. The n goes to the front over there. So n log 0, 0,1 is smaller than log uh, 449 over 450, right? And guys, you need to know your logs for this, okay? I know that officially logs aren't in the curriculum, but then they go and give you questions like this where you obviously need to be able to manipulate the logs. So please make sure you can do them. Right, now I can divide both sides by this, and I end up with n must be smaller than log of 449 over 450 divided by log of 0, 0,1. And now we just need a calculator. So, let's have a look. So, we're going to say log, if I can find it. There it is, log of a fraction of 449 over 450, bracket, all divided by log of 0 0.1, close brackets, equals, and therefore n must be smaller than that. That can't be right. That cannot be right. N must be smaller than nine times. That is not right at all. <sighs> okay. <laughs> so I need to do this question again with you guys 
to make sure that we do get it right. So I'm going to have to do it again. Um, so let's start fresh and do it nice and slowly from the top. Okay. So I don't know what I did wrong. I must have done some silly mistake with bringing things down. So let's just erase everything because this is a very important question. You need to be able to do it. It says, what is the smallest value of n for which sum to infinity minus sum to n is smaller than one? Um, so I just want to check if I made a mistake with my formula. I'm pretty sure I didn't. Um, but let's carry on anyway. Um, okay. So we've got sum to infinity minus sum to n must be smaller than 1. Okay, we know that the sum to infinity is 450. We worked it out. Okay, we now need to just check that we weren't mad and actually get the wrong formula, but I'm pretty sure that I'm right with that formula. Um, so... We've got, so what we can say is, um, therefore, do you agree that we can say minus Sn is smaller than 1 minus the sum to infinity? So therefore, we can say that Sn is going to be, if I divide by, it's going to be greater than the sum to infinity minus 1. Okay, do you agree with that? So therefore, and that's exactly what we did before. I just want to check that I'm not going mad. Um, so therefore, I was perfectly correct. There's nothing wrong with what I did. Sorry. <laughs> so we can say that sum to n must be greater than 449. Why? Because we know that the sum to infinity is 450 minus 1 is 449. Sum to n is a 1 minus r o to the n. My apologies over 1 minus r. Oh, I made a mistake. I put that n on the outside. No wonder that question was wrong. Okay, let's carry on. Is greater than 449. I apologize for the mistake, grade 12. It's a silly, silly mistake that I made. So a was 45. 1 minus 0, 0,9 to the n. Actually makes the question a whole lot easier. Over 0, 0,1 is greater than 449, okay? So then we can take both sides and then we get back to 1 minus 0,9 to the n is greater than 449 over 450. Okay, I've just multi worked out that that is 450 and divided it over. Now, what do we need to do? We need to subtract 1 from both sides. So we get minus 0,9 to the n is greater than 449 over over 450 minus 1. We're going to divide everything by the minus to get rid of that. So when we do that, we have to change the sign again. So we get 0.9 to the n is smaller than, oh, I don't know why it does this, 1 minus 449 over 450. So 0 0.9 to the n is equal to, let's just do that on our calculator. So if we do that, we've got 1 minus fraction 449 over 450 equals 0, 0, 0, 0, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2. I'm going to leave it as 1 over 450. Okay, for the time being. I was hoping to end up being a nice number. Now we can log both sides. So we go log 0, 0,9 to the power of n is log of 1 over 450. So then we go n log 0, 0,9 is log 1 over 450. So the whole thing was right except for the where the n was. So you need to be careful of that. So then we go, okay, fine. Then we divide both sides by this log of 0, 0,9. And we get what? Okay, so let's do this. So we've already said that, that it was 0 comma, 0 2. So now we can log the answer and close the bracket, bracket, and divide it by log of 0 comma 9, comma 9, 9, 
close bracket equals, and that's 57 comma 98, 57 comma 98. And the only thing I needed to do is make sure that it was smaller than, that was smaller than, that was smaller than. Therefore, n is smaller than 57, 98. So what is the question? The question is, what is the smallest value that n can be? Well, it has to be smaller than 57, 98. The smallest value of n for which this works is going to be 57. 57. Okay, not too bad, hey? if you just get your formula right. Now, it says, given that you've got g of x is 6 over x plus 2 minus 1. So this obviously is an hyperbola. Okay, that has been shifted. It says, write down the equations of the asymptotes of g. So what we need to do is think about what has happened here. We've moved this one unit down and we've moved this two units across, okay? So the asymptote is definitely going to be um, y equals minus one because that's what would normally be zero is now going to be over. Now the plus two, remember that what happens is you've got to flip it over. So you have to know, think about what do I need to add to make this happen and it have to add a minus two for this to go away. So the, the, for the other asymptote is x minus 2, x equals minus 2. Let me write that again, x equals minus 2. Now it says calculate the y-intercept. Okay, so on the y-intercept, x equals naught. So therefore we're going to say g of naught is going to be 6 over 2 minus 1. 6 divided by 2 is 3 minus 1, which equals 2. So the y-intercept is 2, okay. The x-intercept is when y equals 0, okay. So 0 is going to be 6 over x plus 2 minus 1. So we can take the 1 across and that becomes 6 over x plus 2. Multiply both sides by x plus 2 and you're left with 6 and then you take it across and it becomes x is equal to 4. So the x-intercept is x equals 4. And this, by the way, sorry, was y equals 2. Right, so now that we've worked that all out, it now says draw the graph of g, showing clearly the asymptotes and the intercepts with the axes, okay? Right, so let's do that. Let's do it. Okay, so now, first of all, we need a y-axis and we need an x-axis, okay? We know that it's going through the point y equals minus 1. So y is going to be going through minus 1. Y is minus 1. Sorry, y is minus 1. Sorry, this is x equals minus 2, um, but I actually want to move it further over. Sorry, I actually want to move it further over, just to make it a little bit easier for us to draw. So, let's try again. This is x equals minus 2, and this is y equals minus 1. So, do you agree that it's go, this point here is going to be minus 2 minus 1? Okay, then we know the y-intercept of g is y equals 2, okay? This is a happy graph, so it should be in this quadrant, the first quadrant and the third quadrant. Okay, so it tells you the y-intercept is y equals 2, so it's going to be 1, 2 about, and the x-intercept is about 4. So the graph is doing something like that, okay? And then obviously it's doing something like that, but not quite as high. So there, and then this would be two and that would be four. Okay, and then obviously this is going to be y equals minus one and this is gonna be x equals minus two. Okay, so do you agree that the Axis is, okay, so now it says draw the graph of G showing clearly the asymptotes and intercepts of the axes, okay. Now it says determine the equation of the line of the symmetry that has a negative gradient in the form Y is equal to. So if this graph was drawn normally, 
And do you agree there would be a line here and a line here? And we'd have this beautiful axis symmetry going through zero with a gradient of negative one. Okay, now the axis symmetry still has a gradient of negative one. It's just that it's moved over. So it's now going through this point minus two, minus one. So the axis of symmetry, that's the negative gradient. We're just talking about the negative gradient one, is now doing this. It's going through, yeah. Okay, so to get this equation, we actually need to find its y cut, but we luckily have a point. It's minus two, minus one. So we got y is equal to minus x plus c. We know that the gradient is minus one. That makes life easy. Now, all we have to do is substitute this point in minus two, minus one, and then we'll find c. So minus two is equal to minus, minus one plus c. So that becomes minus two, it's a plus one, but when you take it across, it becomes minus one equals C. Therefore, C is equal to minus three. So the gradient for the, Y is equal to negative X, negative three is the equation of the line of symmetry that has the negative gradient. And you do identically for the positive gradient, except that obviously it would be plus X and then you'd obviously substitute the values in again. Now it says determine the values of x for which 6 over x plus 2 minus 1 is greater than or equal to minus x minus 3. Okay, so the minus x minus 3 was your equa your equation for your axis of the line of symmetry, okay? It says determine the values of x for which this year is greater than this. In other words, the y values... They want to know what values are this, the y values of the hyperbola are bigger than the y values of the line of symmetry. Okay, so do you agree all the way from here to here, okay, the line of symmetry is higher than the hyperbola, but from here onwards, from here onwards, the hyperbola is higher, it's got a bigger y value than the line of symmetry. And this is x equals minus two. So the values would be x is greater than minus two. It can't be equal to minus two because that's an asymptote and therefore the hyperbola will never attach it. It has to be x is greater than minus two for x is an element of real values. And there you go, that's the answer for that. Right, let's look at this. It says a graph of f of x is equal to a to the x. So this is now an exponential graph, okay? And it tells you that two nine lie on it. That's quite nice. It says calculate the value of a. Okay, well, that's pretty easy. We've got f of x equals a to the x, right? So that is the same as saying y is a to the x. We have the x value, it's two and we have the y value, it's nine. So therefore we can say nine is gonna be a squared, okay? So therefore a has to either be plus or minus three. So therefore a, okay, let's do it slowly. So if we wanna solve for this, we can say that we've got zero is equal to a squared minus nine. Therefore, a minus three, a plus three equals zero. Therefore, a equals three or a equals minus three. And it's pretty obvious that this is a positive exponential graph because the gradient is positive. Therefore, we're gonna use a equals three. And also because it's getting higher sooner. Okay, so a equals three. Right, now it says, let me erase this. Sorry. Okay, now it says to determine the equation of g of x. Um, so g of x is equal to f of negative x. Okay, so g of x is f of negative x. What that means is wherever we see an x, we now have to put minus x. Okay, so g of x is equal to a, which is 3, to the negative x. That's all it is. a to the negative x. That's it. Okay, which could also be written as 1 over 
3 to the x, but that's the equation for d. Now it says determine the values of x for which the inverse of f of x is greater than or equal to 2. Okay, so how do we get inverses? How do we get inverses? The way we get inverses is we swap the x and y and then we solve for y. So that's what we have to do. So at the moment we have y equals 3 to the x. That is our original equation. What we need to do now is swap this. So it becomes x equals 3 to the y. And now we have to solve for y. So the only way that I know how to do that is to log both sides. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to say log x is equal to log 3 to the power of y. <clears throat> okay, then I'm going to say, okay, fine, I'm going to take the y to the front. So I've got log x is equal to y log 3. I can then divide both sides by log 3. Okay, that cancels with that. And then this becomes log x base 3 is equal to y. So my new equation is y is equal to log x base 3. And this is f of negative 1 of x. That is the inverse. And it says determine the values for which this is greater than or equal to 2. So now we need to find out when log x base 3 is greater than or equal to 2. So that becomes 3 to the 2 has to be greater than or equal to x. Therefore, am I right about that? I uh, am. Um, it's 3 to the 2 is greater than or equal to because I'm basically changing back to exponents, I'm going 9 is greater than or equal to x. So it says, for which value of x will this be true? This will be true for x is smaller than or equal to 9. Okay, so this is going to be true if x is smaller than or equal to 9. There you go. Now it says, is the inverse of f a function explain your answer? And the answer is, yes, it is because it's a log graph. And we know that log graphs are inverses, I mean, are functions. So yes, it is. Okay, another way of explaining it is saying for every x value, there's one and only one y value. Okay, now it says the graph of f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c, that's f of x, and g of x, which equals mx plus k, are drawn. d minus 1, 1 minus 8 is a common point on f and g. f intersects at minus 3, 0, and 2, 0. And g is a tangent at d. Okay, now it says for, where, for which values of x is f of x smaller than or equal to naught? Okay, so all they're asking you is for which values of x is the y value of the parabola smaller than or equal to naught? Or another way of saying it is when is this parabola below the x axis? And do you agree that it is below the x axis? It's below for x is smaller than or equal to 2 and greater than or equal to minus 3. All the way from here, all the way along here, all the way along here, f of x is smaller than or equal to 0. It's below the x axis. Now it says determine the values of a, b, and c. Okay, so we know that we've got ax squared plus bx plus c, right? Um, which can be rewritten as, no, I don't want to write that, a x minus 2 x plus 3. That is going to give us the general equation for this, and then we need to work out what a is, because this, these are our two x cuts. Okay, so this is equal to a x squared minus 2 x plus plus 3x is plus x minus 6. Okay, now that is equal to f of x. But we know that there's a point on f and x. We got it. It's 1 minus 8. So when x is 1, y is minus 8. So I can say, okay, it's, therefore I can say, using this formula here, I can say minus 8 is equal to a times by 
1 squared plus 1 minus 6. Okay, so minus 8 is equal to a 1 plus 1 is 2 minus 6 is 4 minus 4 actually. So therefore a is minus 8 divided by minus 4. So a is 2, which I'm very excited to see because this is happy graph. So you want this to be positive. Therefore, the equation for this is f of x is equal to 2x squared plus 2x minus 12. So that point there is minus 12. Okay. So we've done that. To determine the values of a, b, and c, two, a is 2, b is 2, and c is minus 12. Now it says, determine the coordinates of the turning point. Okay, so do you remember that there's an equation for the line axis of symmetry, which says that x is equal to minus b over 2a. Now there's another way you could do this if you really wanted to. You could go, well, this is minus 3 and that is 2. So that's the difference is 5. So you could say 5 divided by 2 is 2.5. So therefore the axis symmetry should probably be over here and be at x equals minus 2. Let's check if we're right. So we've got minus b, so it's minus 2 over 2 times 2, which is minus 2 over 4, which equals minus half. There you go. So therefore we know that the x value here is minus a half. Let me just explain that again. We know that parabolas are symmetrical. We know that it cuts here at minus 3 and it cut at 2. So the axis of symmetry is going to be exactly halfway between the two of these. So if we take these two together, it's 3 over there and 2 over there. So this is the difference of 5 across, which means the axis symmetry has to be 2.5 units away from this one and 2.5 units from this one, which is, has to be at x equals minus a half. So now we know what the axis symmetry is. We now can find the turning point by substituting this back into the original. So we can go y is equal to 2 times minus a half squared plus 2 times minus a half minus 12, which is 2 times a quarter minus, this cancels, 1 minus 12. 2 times a quarter is a half minus 13. So that becomes minus 12 and a half. So the coordinate there is going to be minus a half minus 12 and a half. I'm sorry, I just have to cough. So can you just hold for half a second? Okay, great tools. We're going to stop there. We'll carry on at this point in our lesson tomorrow. Please remember that our lesson tomorrow is at three o'clock since it's Friday. Have a great day.